Hello and welcome. This event is being live captioned by White Coat Captioning. To view the captions during the event, click on the closed captions button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Then click on the show subtitles option to view the captions on your screen. You may also view a full page text of the captions by clicking on the link that will be posted in the chat box below. This will open the captions in a separate browser for you to view. The Vermont Arts Council recognizes that we live and gather here in Andakina, the traditional and unsurrendered homeland of the Abenaki people, one of five Wabanaki nations who have had a continual presence here since time immemorial. In the Abenaki language, Waban is the white flickering light in the sky, and Aki is the word for land or the earth. The Wabanaki are the people of the Don land. Please join us in acknowledging their history and ancestors their enduring presence, and their future generations that will live and gather here in Indakina. Now, on to Shanta. Thank you so much, Desmond. Um, so welcome, everyone. And thank you so much for join, uh, joining us tonight. Uh, and this is the last of our series for I Am 2021. Now, some of you may be familiar already with a little bit of the history of I Am 2021, and I want to acknowledge the work of Kira, who um, has retired from the Vermont Arts Council, but I worked with her in 2019 on this um, beautiful idea of representing the diversity across all of our artists throughout Vermont in late 2019. And it also is a part of the online series of the Vermont Art Council's I Am a Vermont Artist. And there are now over 30 stories and short interviews that you can see on I Am a Vermont Artist. And I also want to highlight that some of the artists that you're going to see tonight are part of the full 19 artists that have been featured throughout this series since the beginning, around the beginning of this year that we kicked off in February. Um, also want to remind you, if you would like to see the gallery, the gallery is going to be up until April 30th. Um, posting that information there now in the chat. Uh, also, if you are not signed on to the Vermont Arts Council's newsletter, feel free to also sign up. That link is there as well. Uh, want to just name a few housekeeping things, put yourself on mute unless you are one of the speakers. Um, please keep the chats and uh, the chat box to a minimum so that we can focus on the wonderful artists that are presenting. Of course, certainly during the Q&A and the discussion, we'd love for you to be able to use the chat option. And for viewing, you have some options on your screen. You can choose how you want to view. Um, so I want to show our gratitude to all of the artists, not just the artists who are here, but also all of the artists who have participated in this I Am 2021. And also for the artists, the lovely artists who are presenting tonight, um, please just remember to cue Dominique, let her know when you are done, if that makes sense. And you will know you're up, same drill, just you'll see your slide and you'll see your headshot and then you take it away with all the beautiful things you have to share with us. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, I'll be kicking things off with a question. Would love to shake things up a little bit and maybe give the artists an opportunity to ask each other questions and leave some room as well for the audience to be able to ask them questions. Again, tonight, the another dimension of kind of going behind the scenes of creativity, but focusing on the business. Like, what is the marketing? How do you reach audience? How do people connect with selling items, uh, their creative items and making a living? And so these are some of the things that are gonna be featured in tonight's talk. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And just an update, a uh, slight change to our program. Um, we, we do not have Caribou with us tonight. Uh, I'm not sure if she's going to be joining us later, but we're going to start with you, William. So just wanted to let you know that slight change 
this just in, as they say? <laughs> Rupal came in. Um, oh, she did. Irene Webster. Oh, she did. Oh, cool. Okay, never mind. Irene, I apologize for that. <laughs> I take that back. So um, we'll be starting with Caribou. I apologize. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Dominique. And again, artists, if you can just let Dominique know when you are done presenting, that would be great. Let her know when you'd like to go to the next slide. to be called Kirubu. I'm going to turn my screen, my um, video off because it's doing this little jumpy things. Can you see it like that way? Yeah, it's very distracting for me. I can't even look at it. So I'm just going to turn it off. Uh, sorry, this is how I look. <laughs> then I'm going to just turn it off. So keep that in your head. <laughs> All right. So I like to be called Kirubu. Uh, it's my middle name. It's um, uh, a name from Kenya because that's where I'm from. Uh, my mama calls me that name. So uh, a little background about that name is that when um, I come from a country that was colonized by the British and as you know, the British tried to change a lot of um, systems, including the naming system and um, regarded the African names as heathen names and uh, required that we have uh, Christian names. And so all my documents, my formal documents, my birth certificate, my, my passport have the name Irene, but when I'm at home, people call me Kirubo and I love Kirubo. So uh, when I came to the States and I, I realized how much I missed all um, tenants of the identity of me, so much so because I was far away from home, I thought, you know, I'm starting, I'm an emerging artist, even though I've been in the in industry for more than 20 years, I would like to reintroduce or reinvent myself and use my middle name, which I love so much. So everyone in here, please don't call me Irene, call me Kerubo. It makes me happy to be called Kerubo. Uh, like I said, I am an emerging artist. I began my, my journey a number of years ago, but at the time I was not, uh, I was not me per se as the artist, I was a background singer and a dancer. And that, that's, that's when I think I began my, my love for stage performance. Um, I didn't visualize myself as ever becoming a, a solo artist uh, because it just seemed too big and too out there. It's for other people. I didn't have confidence on my voice. I didn't have a vision of, of the concept of me ever becoming that person that I am now becoming many years later. Um, so I never really did concentrate on what it means uh, to look at music as a business. Um, I've kind of left it to my husband who has the, the time more than I do because I have a day job. But um, I have been learning a, along the way about um, looking at it deeply. Um, and for me to have done that, I started to just set goals for myself. Now that I'm becoming to become uh, locally known here in Vermont, what do I need to do? Um, I thought I'll begin by recording an album, an album which I've already done. And now I'm quickly starting to think about what's going to be the next step. How am I going to create a fan base that will be loyal to just to me and not just my Facebook friends and my uh, Insta Instagram name, um, friends that I have, and they're not too many, right? And what kind of songs am I writing? Um, will they understand? 
the kind of music I do because it's African folk music. It's not in a language that is mainstream in America, right? And um, I realized that I can, from that angle, start to coin the person of um, the identity of Kerubo, how I want to make it look like. So I realized that what I have to offer, offer has value. And I reflect on my messaging uh, to be what's happening in the current times. Recently, I wrote a, a song which I didn't expect to create such a rave. It was for the COVID-19 and uh, how it's affecting um, the new Americans that I, I, I identify with so much uh, because they're refugees who are from the eastern part of Africa where I'm from. And um, at the time, before I, I, I even thought of writing that song and doing the video and putting it out there, I was entrenched in the mental health that they were going through because of the isolation and the finances and having to, you know, even think about staying six feet apart, uh, given that they come from a culture of proximity. And then they were in large numbers, you know, like seven, eight children in a two bedroom house. How do you even keep six feet apart? Especially if someone in your family has COVID and you know, you can't work from home. You don't have that luxury. You don't even, you're not computer savvy and yeah, just a bunch of things. Um, and then also the, the mindset, my, the mentality about the vaccine and the distrust and the history of it and, you know, just a bunch of things. Um, I find that my songs are reflecting their lives. So I'm writing for them. I am their voice. Um, so I haven't thought further about how that will pan out to the identity of Kerubo when you put it on a larger platform. Right now, it's focused on the things of the now that are happening locally in my little space. Um, but I think it will be a platform for me to step out and be known widely because I didn't expect that video to go across the States and I didn't expect it to be played in Africa. Various, com uh, various countries now are, you know, commenting and sending messages and I'm thinking, wow, I didn't see that coming. What's next? What am I gonna do now? <laughs> and so, of course, I have to start thinking different, differently, yeah, like reshift my, my, um, my mindset and start thinking about things about, marketing and advertising and distribution and live performances and revenue stuff you know um i'm learning as i go i'm not gonna lie to you and say that i'm just such an expert that i know how these things are gonna happen but i am willing to learn and i am learning um i'm learning how i need to position myself uh, by creating my portfolio vamp up my web page i already i had one but people are going into that web page and i'm finding that i need to vamp it up because now things are happening and i need to be ready for them um i need i'm getting a bunch of uh, gigs popping up faster than i can plan for them i didn't see that coming but it's happening <laughs> so um, I have to think about my stage performances. I have to think carefully about this, the, kind, the kinds of songs I write uh, for the people who surround me. They don't all speak Swahili and other tribal languages of, of Africa. I have to sing songs in um, languages, languages that they understand so that uh, they can, I can be really relatable to them. Um, so 
I think in a nutshell, that's what it is that I'm thinking about. And I'm speaking off the cuff. I did not a, a, arrange this big script <laughs> that I was going to read from. But um, that is Kerubo at this time and point on this here and now. And I'm looking forward to listening to others people, uh, other people's views and hear where they are and what they are thinking about. Uh, in their process of um, or their journey of being uh, artists, um, regardless of where they are, they are at in the stage of their life. So um, queuing the next person to go at this point. <laughs> I am William Fortune. I'm gonna do a little twist up here and see if this technology works. I created Dreamcatcher Entertainment as my wing to, to develop film projects back in 2005. And along the way, I developed a property which was Bilosophy. Um, which was wisdom and inspiration, and I didn't see that the two were connected. And philosophy has blossomed into, into meditative works, into poetry, into publications, and it has also moved into podcasts um, with the philosophy 101 podcast. And the publications I've have uh, a poem a day, Sacred and Sacrosanct, which is a book of poetry, and um, philosophy. Meditations on God, Movement, and Wisdom, or sorry, God, Movement, and Miracles, um, which also was trans, uh, worked with director Peter Gould along the way to create that into a stage show, which opened at the Philadelphia Fringe Festival and also played in New York off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway um, for the United Solo Festival. And this, this past year, I created a performance art piece called Spirit Dance, which is in a direction that I would like to move using art as a healing tool. Uh, spirit Dance is about ancestral healing, as about connection and conjuring. And it's as a, I began my career as a clown and I feel that Spirit Dance, even though I'm stepping on the stage almost as a shaman, it's the evolution of the clown into the world of art and how I can touch further than just making people laugh, but helping people feel. Uh, also, the other way I go out in the world is doing pr uh, poetry presentations and, and workshops. So uh, some of the workshops take all of my physical theater skills and my clowning skills, my poetry, my metaphysics, and ties it all together into, in a way that holistically helps people to move from their stuckness, whether it's in business and life, into a space of miracle thinking. So it's not just success-based, but miracle thinking. And use, once again, using all the arts that I do in a healing process. And in, this, in the past year, this has been where I've gone to, where I wound up being on Zoom doing um, workshops in centering and grounding and also in joy. And one of, them, one of the workshops I have developed was for affinity space for Blacks and BIPOCs in finding joy, rewriting their own stories into the stories that are true and centered on who they are, um, which also goes into healing of ancestral and generational traumas. I'm currently doing a project that was funded by the Brattleboro Town Arts Fund, which is Healing Hearts of Hope. Uh, a year ago for during the pandemic, I just, I needed a way to connect. I'm a, I'm very much a people person and being isolated because I'm also immunodeficient. I've had heart surgeries and I'm asthmatic. And I wanted to just, I needed to stay apart, but I needed to connect. And what I started doing was taking repurposed slate and painting hearts on them and leaving them on the side of the road for free so that people can pick up those hearts and have them on display aside their, outside their houses so that others can see their heart shining forth. And it, as the community started placing these hearts around their houses and I could drive and just see these hearts and it filled me with so much hope. Sorry, I get all choked up. Um, 
And this weekend in Brattleboro, I will, um, because of the Town Arts Fund funding this, giving me this grant, I have 50 of these special Healing Hearts of Hope, which have a gold center, which will be given out for free. And for those who don't, if there's more than 50 people that show up, I have another thing that goes with my uh, project I do called Poetry from the Heart, which is uh, guided poetry writing that they can take home and still stay connected and display those um, po poems in their windows at home. And before I sign off and pass it over, I would like to read one of my poems. This poem is called Enough. You are enough. You were born perfect. And then someone told you to try harder. You heard your shape was not the same as some others. Your skin is too fair, too dark, too freckled, too plain. You could be smarter. You make someone else feel dumb. Somewhere, we forgot to wash our hands of this, and our hands soiled the rest of us until we began to follow the, swallow the filth without question. It is time to forget. It is time to remember. Mistakes are learning in process. You can be no one else but you. Your uniqueness is what makes you special. There's nothing wrong with being special. The downs are there to emphasize how wonderful the ups are, and the in-betweens are neither up nor down. When I say you, I more often mean I. I was born perfect. I am enough. In the creation of art, you see there, I've got my hands in a lot of different things. Uh, in the creation of art, there's one of the questions was, how do you deal with failure? And as a youngster, as a teenager, I think I was probably still, I may have still been in elementary school. I had a, on the wall in my room, uh, a saying from Arthur O'Shaughnessy, which was, each failure serves as a rung on the ladder of success. And from a kid, that's how I saw life. Skin, knee, get up, go do something else. Maybe this isn't for me, maybe something else is. And it, you know, folks have said, you need to focus in your mind. And I lamented for years because I thought, wow, if I could do anything else, I would. And creating is what I do. I, if I sit for too long, I'm going to create something. It doesn't matter where it is, whether it's painting, whether it's singing, whether it's dancing, whether it's picking up sticks and turning them into something else. I, I need to create. And I don't see that there is any failure. I see that there is growth. It may not have turned out what, is, what I imagined it to be, but it is something. And, and I think that in seeing the world as a miracle space, then everything is something and everything is inspiration to create. If I were to pass on any words to anyone else who was thinking about doing this career, uh, one of the things that I always heard when I started was, don't do it, don't do it, it's, it's really hard. The arts are not for everyone. The arts are for everyone. I say, do it. If that's what makes your heart sing, do it. Do not. Let someone's short-sightedness, short-mindedness stop you from reaching the stars. I also like to point out that every four years we have a Summer Olympics and the Summer Olympics are a big deal. And every, every other year is the, the Winter Olympics. And every single Olympics, someone breaks a world record, which means that that person did what was impossible prior to that moment. So every two years, we're reminded that we are capable of the impossible. As long as we can think it, we can get there. I like to create impossible every day. Thank you. I'm just uh, digesting everything that Bill just said. 
Thanks so much, Bill. I feel really nourished by that. Um, so I'm going to um, I'm going to talk about a show that I put on in kind of a concept, and the show was called Melt, and it was a circus cabaret, um, had some burlesque in it show, and it started because I had finished circus school and. Um, but I didn't have any work. There was no jobs to go to. And so I decided with another uh, friend of mine who was also a graduate of circus school that we would just make our own show and um, hire our friends and help the artists that way. So we decided to put on this show that corresponded with the spring equinox and the snow melt. And, um, uh, but, but our concept started to broaden. And this is what I want to talk about. You know, I thought, well, here we are needing work. What if we incorporated as many other artists as we could and um, help them promote their work? And so that's kind of how the show um, evolved. <laughs> so, you know, normally you, you know, I think sometimes with art that we can be just focused on our one thing, like, okay, I'm a circus performer, oh, I'm a, I'm a writer, and I'm going to, you know, or doing a poetry reading. But what I wanted to do was try to involve other people and to think kind of more um, holistically in a sense. And so you can do the next slide, uh, Dominique. That's just our, our tickets that we had. Um, part of the concept was for it to be sensory. So it was actually was important for us that we had a paper ticket. <laughs> um, you can go to the next slide. So some of the things that we did was um, invite culinary artists. So this is our, um, we made kind of uh, gourmet Cracker Jacks. And this is kind of our assembly line. We had a, a prize at the bottom of each one. You can go to the next slide. And I had a, two culinary artists develop a Cracker Jack, kind of one that was spicy and one that was more sweet. And so in that way, we were able to involve the culinary arts. Uh, next slide. And then, um, because, because I was thinking in terms of the environment and not wanting to, for concessions, not wanting to, you know, have plastic cups or just a throwaway item, then um, I worked with a local ceramic artist, Sarah Meehan, and she developed these cups and she glazed them in the colors of the show. And, but it was a way to, kind of, to incorporate a ceramic artist, but also to think about the environment and what are some ways that we could design a show that would be lighter on the environment. And this idea came from my work with Flynn Creek Circus in California. Um, when we would put on shows there, they, they also had a pottery studio. And so I was really inspired by that. And so when it was time for me to produce the show, I, I decided to, to bring it out here to Vermont. Okay, next slide. And then with these slides, Dominique, you could just scroll through them. Um, again, in the colors of the show for the artist bios, I asked a local artist, uh, Simon Reed, to do the, the picture. So instead of us just sending a, a photo in, um, we were able, Simon did all these uh, drawings for us and then they were displayed on the wall um, as you were coming in. So kind of like a, like almost like you get to go to the gallery and look at the drawings um, uh, before you came into the show. So in, uh, you know, for this talk, when I was thinking about what could I contribute, um, I thought about the show and just about the idea of trying to, you know, that we're all kind of all in this together and that there's ways that we can kind of extend our hand and incorporate as many other artists as, as we can, as, as is befitting um, to, this, to the situation, to, to whatever you're doing. So uh, I guess, I, that's all I really have to say about um, the show and just kind of a concept and trying to incorporate these other things. And um, I just wanted to uh, 
from Bill's talk, I, he reminded me when he was talking about failure, I just wanted to say um, in, my, in my bio that's on the gallery, I mentioned that the word error comes from Latin errare, and it means wandering or straying or meandering. And that, you know, even, you know, when we encounter things like, um, luckily this show wasn't a flop, we actually, we, we actually didn't lose money. <laughs> so I consider it a success and the artists got paid. Um, uh, but this idea of, you know, that kind of our path and, and error is just kind of a meandering path because, you know, the path of the heart isn't necessarily a straight line. Sometimes we, it leads us to the places that we need to go. So just end on that, that there really isn't, uh, again, no failure, no errors, just a little straying of the path. Uh, okay, we can go to the next artist. Thank you. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Leaf and I use they them pronouns having me. Um, next slide. Um, so I am an interdisciplinary artist. Um, I studied sculpture and ceramics and fiber arts at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and I recently graduated this past I guess a year ago now. It's crazy to think about that. Um, um, last May. And so um, this in front of us right here is a collection of wooden spoons that I hand carved using various wood um, chisels and mallets as well as um, various rotary tools and also standing um, stationary tools in the wood shop. Um, Next slide. Um, this is a shot of my website, leafsilver.com. Um, and this is, um, oh, can you go back? Yeah. Um, this is um, a collection of photographs of all of the spoons that I've made. Um, and um, yeah, I just really, I think that having really high quality photos has really helped me to create a sort of professional looking, um, professional looking photos on a very low budget. A lot of these photos are made with a piece of paper taped to the wall um, as to make a seamless backdrop. And so that's sort of like my art school hack, if you will. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. Next slide. Um, this is a photo from an art sale that I did um, my, my senior year, my senior fall of school. Um, and this was a really fun project. I sort of see this as like my second, my um, first thesis project um, of, for my school. And um, it was really fun to sort of set up the table and um, it's sort of this, this te big tent with a bunch of artists tabling at and everyone has their own table set up and um, it's a really great opportunity to um, actually meet tourists and people walking by who might be interested in buying your artwork. And so that was um, sort of, that was a really fun experience for me, um, just getting to meet um, all these people and talk to them about my art and um, have people actually buy my spoons. And so um, I really enjoy the business aspect of that. Like um, they told us that we should try and make our table stand out from everyone else's. Um, and to really focus on our one thing that we're selling that we're the best at. And so I think that this project really taught me a lot about salespersonship and um, how to kind of market my art and talk to customers um, in real life. Um, so that was a really great experience. Next slide. Um, this is another shot of my website. And so um, 
after graduating, it was sort of like I was thrown into this like this uh, transitional period where um, I just graduated, no job, um, just trying to live my life. And during like the pandemic starting and sheltering in place. And so I was really just like trying to, first of all, like rest and relax and like decompress and like process, like having just graduated. Um, but also I was thinking about like, what can I do right now that's going to be helpful for my future? And um, that's just going to be something that I can keep going and that's going to possibly make me money. And so um, I, in the process of making my own website, I discovered that I really enjoyed it. And so I wanted to help other people do that as well. And so I had the idea to start a website design business. Um, my mission statement right now is to help artists, small businesses, and nonprofit organizations transform their online presence um, with graphic design, website design, photography, um, um, creative problem solving, and um, yeah, and so next slide. Um, I did this through um, having my first client or um, actually not my first client, my first sort of official client um, with this business idea in mind was sized in some catering, which happens to be my family's catering business. Um, I'm very proud to say. Um, and so this was a really fun project um, and Ties Dim Sum Catering basically hired me to redesign and um, do a rebranding, um, an entire rebrand of their catering business. And this included um, designing logos, business cards, a new website, um, setting up online ordering for the website as well as um, signs and menus and other various labels and stickers. And so that's what, that's what my, my first big project was um, with this design work. Next slide. This is a shot from the homepage of the website. Um, yeah, and it was really, it's been really um, rewarding to um, help a local business and also um, help my own family's business sort of thrive in this time when a lot of restaurants are really struggling to um, sort of pivot in this moment to do like online ordering and curbside pickup and stuff like that. Um, next slide. Um, this is another project that I recently finished, um, or recently completed. Um, it was a collaboration between myself and um, one of my friends who also does graphic design, who designed this logo. Um, um, yeah, and so this was another really great sort of learning opportunity for me to really like dive into um, contracts and project management. And that's something that I've been trying to kind of cultivate and develop for my business is to really um, be really organized and make sure that all of my tasks are being completed on time on the deadlines and um, just like produce um, top level work for people who are paying me. So that's been really exciting to feel sort of in control of a small aspect of my life in a time when nothing really can be controlled. Um, yeah, next slide. So um, when I started doing graphic design, I realized that it kind of sucks to be stuck in a computer all day. And so I really needed to figure out a system where I could balance my work and my life and make it feel good and like make it feel gratifying to be doing this work and also prevent myself from burning out. And so I really was focusing on um, going on walks. I tried to go on a long walk um, at least twice a week. 
This is a picture of some beautiful moss and a lichen um, from about a week ago um, that I thought was really cute. It looks like little trees with the big trees in the background. Um, and yeah, just this spring has been really nice. And now um, someone mentioned before about the snow coming, which I don't, I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> But um, other than that, the, this winter and walking through the winter landscape has been really inspiring for me and um, really just like healing. Um, next slide. I found this curious leaf and little bubble object. Um, and I was just, um, I have no idea what it is. Um, I asked my family and someone said that it might be like a, a chrysalis or like a, 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 some sort of insects, out, like I don't know what it is, but if anyone knows what this is, I would really like to know. Um, next slide. Um, this is a picture of my cat. Their name is May May and in really essential to my mental health and well-being during this time, um, the real MVP. Um, yeah, I think everyone should have love in their life. Um, if, if not with a furry friend or another person, then the love for yourself because you're the only person who's gonna be there for you at the end of the day. Um, that's just my, my personal take on that. Um, thanks so much. That's the end. <laughs>
and then second things uh, uh, they called tumba, but tumba kind of like uh, we we can say religion, but it's not really religion. But we say Malagasy believe because so that's a lot of process around that. But the Malagas believe means our ancestor came to another people, very special people in their body. And then that people changed to that our ancestor. And then the people can talk to the ancestor to, to transmit the message to the God. I uh, means I don't know what is gonna say how to translate, but do we call this Zangahari? Zangahari means creator. And then third things uh the when the people gonna be married. So a lot of process if the people are gonna married. And those are things connect to music. And then fourth things, the, they called saburaha. So everything we're going to do in our life in Madagascar, we, we do like a big celebration. And then we kill the zebu, the zebu type of cow in Madagascar only found in Madagascar. So we kill that to get the blood and then we ask the benedictions. That's the, so those parts, really big things. So in all the Malagasy people knows about those four big things. And then because in Madagascar we have 18 tribe. So those 18 tribe, they have different dialect. And then, so Mika, Mika Heli, I come from East coast of Madagascar. And then like the name of the province is called Tamatavi and my mother has come from there and then I grew up in my mother's family. And then my mother is c come from in a little town. It's called uh, Hambuluhotu, kind of like a little bit north of the center of that, the province. And then that's a little town. There is the, they called port of slavery. So in the past time, the British came to the business, uh, they called Hop Fall. And then that ship. yeah, ship kind of cost and the ship came, the British uh, dealing with the king to changing the, doing a change. And then that port, uh, so a lot of, slavery going on that part of that town. So my mother come from that. So I learned a lot of, of that. And then, um, so the music, why is that connect to music? Because all of that things is culture. So I grew up in that. So when we do that celebration, everything, the music goes in around the circle and then so kind of like automatic you got the 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 connection so like me so when i can't to create a new creation for me it's it's uh, i agree it's an inspiration because all the the music the music i play come from the ancestor
So I, I, I never create the music. So that means it's a message. All is message. If our ancestor wants to, they have a message, they translate to me, and then I, uh, I uh, translate the message to our community, our family, especially my family. If my ancestor, they want to say something to my family, the ancestor came to me, and then I translate the message. So that became music. Actually, I don't. I didn't learn music. I don't know the the scale, the everything on the music. But if I if the spirit come to me, I I I became a good player. But if um, if they not come to me, I'm a really bad player. I can't play. Even all my fingers stuck. I don't know how to to explain. Sometimes it's very deep very deep so and then i start kind of like learn that all things that things is it depend of the business if you want to uh spread these things so in madagascar it's very hard if you playing because a lot of people uh, the same like me so in the music business if you playing like a traditional music the it's not very uh, the people not interested about it because everybody knows about it and then that kind of like a little tricky in the music business so the people need very complex uh, different style of music and so it kind of like became a really big, uh, big problem for the musicians doing uh, uh, traditional music because it's very only the like a center because Madagascar uh, it's a colonized French colonized so and so. English is my third language. I learn English since I get in the United States. So my first language is Malagasy. So the Malagasy and then second language is French. And when you go to school, you learn French. And then now we start uh, the English language is kind of like start uh, uh, open in Madagascar. So, when I singing, I song always singing my dialect, the, my language, the, where I come from. Even some people in Madagascar, they don't really understand, except the people where I come from, they really understand. But if they, the missiles come from the ancestor, everybody's gonna understand. Even American people, the Chinese people, all, all the people in the world gonna understand because the music is giving a vibration and that vibration connect to the spirit. So all the people, if they're watching the show, like you go to the ceremony of the tomba, when you go there, even you just watching, you're gonna you're gonna feel the vibration, so you're gonna understand what's going on there. But the basic is the people asking the benediction, and then I learned that, and then I kind of like I, I bring that all experience to the music business because that's the really big uh, uh, deal in these things how are we gonna bring these things to the our business and our community and and then i kind of like 2000 i released an album my first album and then 2000 
six, uh, I released uh, three album with my band. That was successful because I did a tour all around of Madagascar. And I did a tour in Europe. And, but in Madagascar, very complicated the music business. It's very, because why? There is no right status in Madagascar for the musicians. Nothing. If you have a chance to uh, sell, uh, became a famous, you're gonna get a little money. But if you don't have a chance, but trust my ancestor, always trust the message came to me and the people until right now, a lot of generations since I left Madagascar, learn my music, learn all uh, I did before. And then uh, to, uh, like, if you don't have somebody support you, so you're gonna be really disappear. And then I moved to United States 2017. And that was related to my family situation. That's why I'm here. I'm here to, to be my choice. I can say my choice, but if I'm my belief, our ancestors send me here. So I have a message here. That's my goal. And then when I get here, I, I, I start thinking about this is really completely different than the business where uh, I was before, you know. I, I have no idea what, what I'm gonna do here or I'm gonna let my talent go on or, or I'm gonna continue and then the, my ancestor, they don't accept that. I have to continue. And then we start sending, the first step we did, we start sending an email to the music venue around Burlington, Vermont, uh, uh, bar or the music festival. Nobody answered, it didn't work because here, if it's, um, nobody knows, they don't care about you. And uh, little literally, I got a, a response, email response from uh, a lamp shop right in downtown in Burlington. They, I, uh, they let me play and then I play and then just a few people came. Yeah, for free. No, no money, no cost money to the, the free concert. And then those few people, they really interested the in something I did. And then follow up to Radio Bean start. surprise to me because I, I, I wasn't sure, I was not sure because how the people are gonna connect to my music. And then I, I, I was really, you know, really happy at that time because the people really, wow, really interesting. Yeah, radio came to the show and then did interview. And then the, they invited me to come to the station doing another interview, uh, uh, direct on radio and live, a little bit of live music. And then that things start kicking out. So, start the connection so those all the venues and the festival we send the email take back to me start back to me and then starting like a 
2018, I started doing doing uh, do the a tour around Vermont, and really, really, you know, I, I was kind of like a, it's very for me that's really important because my the thing is I have to really uh the message came to me if it's not transmitted to our community that means there is a problem that's from the inspiration so for me it's kind of like it's kind of like the message is good and then i start kind of I started and then I have a website now so that really uh, if do you have a Santa do you have the website uh, yeah I um Dominic has a few clips from this yeah. uh, this is the VPR radio uh, interview and then uh, can you go next for the website? So this looks like the website now. So I'm really happy about this because I'm still, until right now, still learning a lot about the because the music business in the United States, it's very big. I know I have to learn a lot of things, but I have to go step by step. I know that so and um that's the things but thank you so much uh the, to chose me part of this session and i'm really happy to share with you this uh, little step i did until right now and then i have a coming up show uh more soon yeah uh start saturday this saturday in downtown burlington thank you so much everybody thank you sai you're muted Hello, my name is Sai Xi, and um, I came from China many, many years ago, 34 years ago. I consider myself as a painter, but interest me that my art brought me to so many different aspects of life. And I'm very proud that I'm an artist. And because of art, I can be able to do many things. So I, I'm not only an artist, I, I'm a painter, and I, can, I, I do socially engaged art, installation art, and I, I'm also full-time teaching Chinese language in, to the high school students. And also before the pandemic, I take students to China for study abroad. And besides my full-time teaching, I also started a business and catering business. So, and yeah, this is a, a group of uh, painting that I just recently did when I was taking students to China and these these villages and uh, houses just brought me back of my, my when I was a little growing up in China and I just uh, felt this so familiar and the smell of it and the taste of it. It just um, brought me the memory and my, I just feel I'm right in there. And for a long time, since I came to United States, I don't see myself as Chinese and I don't see myself as uh, Asian. 
I see myself as a as a global citizen. So I'm crossing my life is constantly crossing between and my childhood growing up in China and also here and in in United States. So I constantly don't see home to my to anywhere is my home. I just feel the the whole the earth is my home. I don't see that United States my home or China is my home. But finally in um in the in March 16 there's a Asian hate crime and massacre brought me to realize that wow I am Asian and the shooting the killing is not silent me it's not going to silent me I even more uh, you can slow down a little bit so this group is uh, later I will talk about this group of uh, painting so the earlier painting is a Chin China paintings and I even feel more proud to be to be Asian so it's for the first time to to live in United States for 34 years now first time I realized I'm Asian before I didn't realize I didn't feel I didn't I didn't see myself as Asian I see myself as a um, global citizen so for the first time I feel proud to be Asian so and this group of painting and also later on you can move on to another group of painting this is uh, this uh, Vermont landscape so I'm constantly in between like Vermont natures and also it's so much I am so much feel so blessed that being in the nature and in Vermont uh, woods and and water Vermont air and it makes me so nourished in in so many different ways and so I I to be an artist that and being uh, transformed to be so many different area I work I work in many different jobs and many different um, different projects and for, for many people will ask me how did you have time to do this and yes I always respond yes I do have time I always have time I never say myself I never say I don't have time because time to me is life if I if I say I don't have time which means I don't have life so I always make time there's so many things maybe I don't own it's not belong to me but time I own it I, it belongs to me no one can take away my time so I do I love to work I love to no matter what kind of full-time jobs and, and I come back I will, I will do cooking cater and hard work heals me and I love uh, hard work that it sounds like oh, working is is uh, is boring but to me working is creating and I will be waking up in the morning I have idea I have more idea new idea my idea is racing and no one can stop me no one can stop can hold me back so I I constantly creating and making so it's you can move on more and so for March 16 the the shooting events the Asian hate event so like a, like a bill we're sending loves 
So on this day, I, I made a dumplings, free dumplings offer to, to the community, sending my loves, sending my nourishment to the community. So I'm deciding that on every year, March 16 is sending love, Asian, be proud to be Asian day to stop this um, hate. There's so much hate. I believe that love is more powerful than bullets. So, and this is uh, my passion of making, this becomes a business, becomes, um, becomes a support of art. So, and we, I, that's why I don't, I don't get tired of working. I don't get tired of making. And it's my, my love. So this part of it because of being artist. And being art, being artist is uh, constantly making and creating. So I'm making food as art, art as food. And I'm making, I'm teaching, teaching as art. And, and so everything to me is art. The life is art. Everything and I touch, I see is art. So I don't identify that art is just one kind of form. Art is so many forms. Sometimes sleep is art. So, and I see everywhere is art. My life itself is art. And so that's, um, that's I, I say that being artist is lucky. So here, and you can move another slide. So and um, besides my teaching of language and, and cooking as a cater, cater, and also teaching online courses of how to draw and draw, um, draw realistic drawing. So I'm, I, teach, I tell my students, this drawing is not about product. It's not about um, how much I can, I can finish this uh, painting, this drawing. It's about the process. The very important learning about this kind of drawing is um, to, to learn to be patient and to be observer to observe, to, to be, to observe the object, the relation of object, the, the sense of the, each object, the material of object, comparing of the material and the, and the lighting and, and the relationship of you, almost like communication with the object and making the object become alive. And each object has their own character. There's so much in there to process. So the process itself is very important, is important, more important than product. So my students spend this kind of painting, this kind of drawing, I ask them spend at least 30 hours on the drawing and if you can expand I also ask you to spend 100 hours on this drawing and the more you can sit the more you can read about each object the more you can learn how the relationship how the nature how the how the environment so the, this becomes a healing also it's a healing that you are, you are outside of, the, the outside is larger than yourself. Each object is larger than you. It's, there's a, you are just tiny little, tiny little dust, but there's so much outside that you, you, can, you can be a part of it. So, and so 
it, this learning is about learning about outside of yourself. In the end, yourself disappears. You're not, and the object and the, the drawing itself speaks. The, the artwork speaks itself, has, has its own life. Once the art, artwork is born, yourself is, is not important. It's the art is important. And the art can live beyond you, beyond yourself, beyond the lifelong and can passing on to generation after generation as, as myself can be vanished. Can be, can be stopped, and so I. That's why I'm, I worship about art, and not about myself. It's about art. So, I'm lucky to be a part, to be born, to be an artist, to be a part of art creation. And thank, thank you, art is uh, something so godful to me is uh, religion. And thank you. Thank you, Sai. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Um, so, and everything, there was such richness in what everybody talked about. Uh, Caribou, there was a lot in what you talked about shaping a connection to your identity and how that connected to opening to more audiences. William, you talked about miracle thinking and all of your pathways to your various avenues of creation. Uh, Nettie, your multi-sensorial approach and all your inclusivity of how you included other artists and what you did, uh, Leaf, and how you pivoted and continue to pivot with all your work uh, and thinking very carefully about how your work is presented, but also how you work with other artists, but how you present. Mika Haley uh, loved how you talked about the importance of culture and how that was interwoven into the creation of music and your approach to music and Sai, what you just talked about in terms of the nourishment and support of art and seeing art in everything. And I wanted to, I'm not going to ask any questions, but what I'm gonna do is open up and see if there might be a few questions from the audience that the audience might wanna ask, or if there are any questions that any of the artists might want to ask each other. And feel free to use the chat if you have questions that you wanna post. Um, for any of the artists. I have a statement rather than a question. And it it ties in with Sai, Mika Haley. Um, in for, first of all, I'd like to just have the state my gratitude for the ancestors in my creation creative process as well, and how um, uh, that has shaped my pathways. Also, with, with what Sai said at the end is really important because it's something that I've had, but I kept to myself for so long, is this is spiritual to me. And each time I get to create, I get to perform. When I sit down with the work, I'm in church. And when I'm working with, when I'm with the audience or if I'm teaching a workshop, it is such a magical spiritual experience for me uh, that I, I want, you know, like I, I get to start sweating. It's just such an engagement. And it is, and I, that's when I know that it's, it's pure. Um, I don't have to think that I'm going to do this or do that. It comes, it flows forth. And I think that that's really, um, it's just a special, uh, I wish that I could share that moment with everyone. Thank you. 
And I just want to say out loud, uh, Shoshana Bass posted, I just want to appreciate everyone who shared generously and the Vermont Arts Council, uh, the, the ASL interpreters for making this space. It was a pleasure to listen to you all. Yes, I have to say my experience of um, being locked in the studio, I, for my personal experience and my my own if I my for my own selfishness I love to just to be isolated and in my studio and do my work and just enjoy myself but um, they my experiences start to grow start to feel I start to asking myself why am I doing art what what what's the purpose of doing art so with this question, I start to go out to, to the community. And I started, I have a group of painting of um, Joe, Joe, the community members, Joe, my neighbors and my families and Joe, any, anyone who came to my life and to recognize them, everyone's beautiful. Everyone is a special. So I had this, uh, enormous portraits of everyone's portraits just draw so that brought me to connect brought my life brought my art to connect to to the community so opened my studio and instead of closing it now i start to open then the cooking is the same way of and my 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 studio expanded into the into the kitchen. And now I see my kitchen is a palette. All the ingredient is a palette. And the kitchen and reaching out to the community is another way of uh, sharing my art, sharing my experience with the community. And teaching, of course, of course, teaching is the reaching out to. So to my, my all years of practice in the studio, now I really, exp I feel I re expanded my practice into the community and made my art is more meaningful and not just for myself and for everyone else. Thank you. Were there any uh, last questions? Oh, Mikaela, Mikhail, you're, you're um, you're muted. I, do you want to unmute? Um, okay, there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you again. Um, uh, well, um, I just uh, want to talk about my uh, practicing. So, the, my problem, I don't have time to practice my 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 music my 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 experience because since i get to united states i i have to find another job it's very completely different of my culture my my talent my art i have to i work at school I'm, I'm working at the kitchen because I like this because feeding the kids, that's really my joy, you know, feeding the kids really big, big responsibility because how um, the, the, the kids are really having good food, healthy food, you know, that's really, that's, kind of like parts of my ancestor. And then my, my father, he was a teacher when, when it's, but he passed away a long time ago, 10 years ago. But um, he is a teacher, he was a teacher uh, chemistry and uh, math at the time. And then that's kind of like remind me a lot of things around those kids in here in United States. 
but the things is my art, my music always continue spiritual because I don't have any time. I said I don't have any time. Always on the stage, I practice my music. So that's why I'm trying. I, I want a freedom, you know, and I, I want to like every me artist having a place, working, you know, inspire, connect really good to the, the, everything, your soul, your brain connected, everything. That's you're gonna really grow up. And I'm still on my way. I don't know where I'm gonna touch my objective, but I'm on my way. So just uh, I wanna let you know, guys, it's, it's very complicated because I, I work full time in a kitchen and my work is very heavy duty, tired like last time. I got an injury here on my hand. So that's kind of like, it's kind of like a bad sign for the Malaga Spini because I have to do my something. I, I, the, the, the ancestor wants me to transmit the message. So I'm still continue doing. And the, the, the things is always if I, this is really deep because if I do something, always something blocked it. I have to ask to the ancestor, let me do these things. So that's kind of like, you know, so I'm too busy for something else, but not my art. But the big things is part of that things to help our community. That's the connection between, especially I'm working at school with the kids, you know, all the spirit connect. So yeah, that's the things. So thank you so much, everyone. I hope uh, you, you are doing well and uh, Zangahar is gonna help us, especially this time. We need help each other. This situation, it's become really weird, crazy. Might be something else we don't know. We gonna help us. We don't know yet the, what is the best result, but the big thing is we need to love each other support each other let's do a, let's do our heart let's do our arts and we're gonna win her i believe that thank you so much everyone thank you thank so you. much and thank you thank you everybody um i think one of the main through lines that is so clear through what everyone said is at the core of anything you're putting out into the world, whether you're selling it, whether you're trying to find collaborators or bring it or connect it to the audience at the heart, at the center needs to be the heart and your love and your passion of what you're doing within itself and the soul of your work. And so I want to, again, thank you all. Um, I want to thank everyone who attended. I want to thank Trisha and Benny, thank you so much for your interpretation. Um, thank you, um, Vermont Arts Council. It's been awesome collaborating and bringing this out to everyone. And I wanna also just remind for the rest of the month, you'll be able, and I'm just putting this in the chat, um, there's a link to the exhibit so for the rest of the month till April 30th, you'll be able to see the exhibit of not just the artists here, but also the rest of the artists in I Am 2021. And also if, and I apologize, uh, there's a typo in newsletter. So I apologize for that. Um, but the link isn't incorrect. So if you do not get the Vermont Arts Council newsletter, um, definitely please feel free to sign up. Um, so with that, 
I'm going to wrap the evening. And uh, Dominique Desmond, before I do that, uh, do you have any else thing to add? And we should do the great unmuting and and like a round of applause for everybody too. Yeah, just thank you as all. Uh, another wonderful event. Great to see everybody. And the last event of our series. Uh, it's been wonderful. <laughs> And oh, I left them one out too. Uh, thank you. We have a captioner, uh, Tess, uh, who's been captioning. Thank you so much. Again, thank you everybody for um, helping to make this happen. And um, round of applause for all the, I don't want to be the only lone person clapping <laughs> for all, everybody. Thank you, Shanta. Can, can I do thank one, you so much. one thing? I just, you know, I always steal the moment, but if, each of us, all of us who hears this voice, can you just wrap your arms around yourself? Just give yourself a big hug and close your eyes when you do that and place each and every one of us in that hug and know that we are hugging you back. And take a deep breath in that hug and know that that is all the love that surrounds you all the time. Then open your eyes and look fresh and new at every face that you see here and know that you are loved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.